Since this chapter is about visualizing high dimensional data, just like the way we had iris data set for exploratory data analysis, let's take an other data set here. Of course, your iris data set was a four dimensional data set, right? Which is not very exciting, uh, which was okay for our exploratory data analysis. But now we want to do data visualization of extremely high dimensions and dimensional data reduction. So the data set that we'll use is called the MNIST data set of characters. Let me explain you what it is. So let's go to Wikipedia, our friend always as usual. So it's it's called the MNIST database. MNIST database has, uh, so MNIST is a very, very uh, large name here. It's modified National Institute of Standards and Technology database. Uh, it, it's a database of handwritten digits, right? So I'll, I'll show you, first let me show you some examples. I'm going to this very, very interesting blog here uh, called, if, if you see the link here, it's called cola.github.io and it's called Visualizing MNIST. Okay, there's a blog. Uh, I believe uh, this is written by uh, one of the engineers. Uh, I think he's currently an engineer at Google. This is one of the best blogs I've come across explaining data visualization of high dimensional spaces using the two techniques, using PCA and TSNI that, that we'll learn as part of this course. Okay, I, I'll follow this blog because it's, it's terrific. And I give full credit for all the content here uh, to Kola. I think uh, that's the name of the engineer who built all of it. Terrific blog. I mean, this is this is terrific blog. I can I can just go to about, and it's Kola's blog, Christopher Ola, um, and uh, yeah, sorry, his name is not Kola. It's Christopher Ola. He's a researcher right now at Google. Terrific blog. I mean, I mean, this is probably one of the best blogs I've seen about uh, visualizing high dimensional data and understanding what it is. So I'll I'll provide a link to this uh, link to this page uh, in the description section, and this page is not built by me. It's by, built by Christopher Ola. Again, just wanted to reiterate that, but it's very, very hard to redo all of this. So I thought by, by giving credits to him, I'll reuse some of the great content that he has created. So this content, all the copyrights to the content belong to Christopher Ola. I'm just leveraging it so that students can learn it much faster and much more efficiently. Okay, so let's let's look at what the MNIS data set is. The MNIS data set is basically handwritten characters. So each of these, so this is basically a photograph of a handwritten character. So we have characters from zero, one, two, so on, so forth, up to nine. We have 10 characters here, right? And these are basically, somebody has handwritten this character and taken an image of it or scanned it, right? This is basically 28 pixels horizontally and 28 pixels vertically. That's, 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 that, that's the size of each of these images. So each of these images is basically 28 pixels horizontally, 28 pixels vertically, right? This is a computer vision data set because what we have to do and we are given 60 so the data set is like this we are given 60000 or 60k training points training data points right where we have some data points for 5 some data points for 0 4 1 etc and we are given 10k test data points right so we are given 10k test data points so we have to build a model using the 60k and test it on the 10k uh, a 10k data set. So for those of you who don't understand what train and test is, don't worry about it. We'll learn it when we learn machine learning. For our case, let's just assume we are given a 60,000 uh, 60, data points. Okay, train and test, don't worry. We'll learn it when we learn actual machine learning techniques called classification. Okay, so don't worry if you don't understand what train and test is. That's perfectly okay. Okay, let's go and write it. So our data set is basically xi and yi. Okay, and we are given one to 60K points. Okay, we are given two data sets. One data set is called training, one data set is called test. Don't worry about what the terminology means. Let's just use a train data set. Okay, it's 60K points, where XI, each XI is basically an image, which has 28 pixels horizontal and 28 pixels vertical, right? And YI could belong to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It can be any one of these classes, right? So here, if, I, if I've written something like zero here, that will belong to class zero, right? So the task here, that's very important. The objective here, the objective in this task is given a new image, a scanned image of 28 pixels by 28 pixels, I have to determine whether uh, whether the user has written zero, one, two, three, or one of, one of these 10 characters, okay? That's the objective. The objective is to classify the written character, the written character into 
one of the 10 categories into one of the 10 numeric characters right okay so that's the objective right now let's go back to the data set just for a second so given this given this data set so we are just using the 60k points here we are not using the 10k we'll use them later trust me we'll use them later now let's just stick to the 60k points now given this image right each of our data points is like this but what did we learn we learned that xi's need to be data vectors column vectors right that's what we learned we never saw we never saw images so the first question that comes to your mind is how do i convert an image okay which is 28 pixels on the horizontal and 28 pixels on the vertical how do i convert it into so this is what you're calling my xi right this is what is given to me how do i convert into a column vector that i know this is what i know this is what i know belongs to rd this is what i know how do i how do i go from this to this so let's let's see how to do it okay so this is each of my images and let, let's see how this image is represented internally okay mathematically so at the end of the day any image has to be represented using numbers in a computer right so let, let's see how this is represented right here so in a number like one is represented so there are 28 values here this is a matrix of 28 by 28 size right the 28 rows so 28 columns and 28 rows right that's the size of a data set now given that let's let's see what's interesting here so wherever it is fully black i have one here right wherever it is slightly gray i have a value which is which is which is slightly away from one so here i have 0 0.6 which means it's gray all these are full blacks here it's a light gray this is how one is represented internally wherever it is white all these pixels which are white see this is i can draw a grid like this right it's 28 pixels by 28 pixels so i can write it i can draw a grid here right a very fine grid of of one two three so on so forth up to 28 similarly one two three so on so forth up to 28 and i can take the value in each pixel if it's fully dark i'll put a value of one if it is slightly gray i'll put a value between zero and one like this this is very light gray this is darker gray this is still darker day and this is full black if it is white i'll put a value of zero okay so we have converted now an image so now what what do we have we have an image okay which you have converted into a numerical matrix a numerical actually real matrix all right this matrix is of size 28 cross 28 Again, this matrix is not your data matrix. This is one data point. Don't forget that. This is exactly one data point. Now the question is, since I've converted an image, okay, into a data matrix, how do I go to a data vector or a data point? This is not a data matrix. This is just, this is not, let me write it. This is not your data matrix. Okay, this is not your data matrix X. This is just a matrix representation a matrix representation of your image now let's see how we can convert this matrix of pixels into a vector okay that's very very simple that's extremely simple what we do is so given that we have 28 pixels by 28 pixels we do something called flattening so sorry let me let me so we do something called flattening flattening basically says okay let, let me draw it here so that it's much more clearer for you okay so let's assume I have a matrix, which is one, two, three, four, five. Let's just, let's assume I have five columns and let's assume I have five rows, just for simplicity, because it's easier for me. Let's assume I have a value of one, two, four, six, eight, three, two, one, eight, one, some numbers like this, okay? Two, one, six, eight, four, three, two, one, eight, one. 8, 2, 4, 2, 6, 8, 1. Okay. So how do I convert this into a column vector? So we do something called as flattening. Okay. Flattening is basically you take each row. Okay. You write it 1, 2, 4, 6, 8. So this is done. 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 Then I take the second row. 3, 2, 1, 8, 2. Done. Then I take the third row. 2, 1, 6, 8, 4, so on and so forth, right? I just build a long vector by looking at my looking at my image matrix. This is my image matrix, right? 
I'm just going row wise. First, I finish the first row. Let me change the color here. First, I finish the first row. Then I go to the second row. Right. Then I go to the third row. Then I go to the fourth row. Then I go to the fifth row. You can also do column wise. Nobody is stopping you. You can do first column followed by second column, so on and so forth. You can do row flattening or column flattening. Okay. This is basically a row flattening. Now, if this matrix is 5 cross 5, what is the size of this vector? How many elements are there? There are 25 elements, right? This vector will be 5 into 5 is 25, right? This will be 25 rows and one column, isn't it? So in our data set, we have 28 by 28 pixels image, right? So 28 into 28. So what we have here is each of our image is 28 pixels by 28, which means there are 28 horizontal pixels and 28 vertical pixels. So I can convert this into a data point. I can convert this into a data point, which is a column vector by just doing row flattening, right? I can simply do row, flatten, row flattening or column flattening, anything is all right, which means I go finish first row, then I go finish second row, then I finish third row, so on and so forth. This vector will be, what is 28 into 28? I think 28 into 28 is 784, right? right? So this vector will have 784 rows and one column. So by just using row flattening, so let's go back here, okay? So this is this is what my, my actual image is. My image had 28 horizontal pixels and 28 vertical pixels. How do I convert into a matrix representation of an image? By saying that all the black points will be one, all the gray points will lie between zero and one, all the white points are zero, all right? So on and so forth, as we saw here, as we saw here. Now, after I do this, I basically do row flattening or column flattening. And now I get a 784 cross one dimensional vector for each data point. Now, how will my overall data set look like? Let's go through that. My overall data set capital X now is, so each, each image or each data point is now 784 dimensions, okay? Which means I have feature one, feature two, feature three, so on and so forth. F784. See, if I take each pixel value as a feature, I can take it, right? That's the simplest way to represent. And I have one, two, three, I have 60k points. So my matrix here is n cross d, where n is 60k, d is 784, right? Now here, this xi, this xi transpose for me belongs to R784, right? So this is the total data set. This is the total MNIST data set. Of course, I also have a Y here, okay, which is N cross one. For each XI here, I have a YI and YI as we know belongs to the set. It could, it could be any one of these characters, right? Because your whole MNIST data is only 10 characters, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So given this data set, now we want to visualize this data. Now here, here is the fun part. So now you, we have a 784 dimensional data set. Okay. We struggled even to visualize four dimensional data set. We saw, right, when we have four, five or six dimensional data set, we can use things like pair plot. But as soon as this dimensionality increases, even when it becomes 10, pair plots become almost useless. Now here is the most interesting thing. How do we now visualize a 784 dimensional data set? This is the beauty of machine learning. We will use simple linear algebra, very, very simple ideas to visualize the 784 dimensional data set. Before we go and learn techniques like PCA and TSNI, I want to show you the results, which are, which are mesmerizing. I want you to show the results. Of course, I'm running through this, but I'll, I'll explain you all of the, all of the topics here. Okay. Let's see. I want you to show, uh, I think, uh, let me, I have a nice visualization here. Um, I'm just trying to pull it up. Okay, the best, let's let's go to the bottom of the page and let's see, let's see, there the are multiple techniques here. We are learning the two most important techniques, PCA and TSNI. TSNI is literally the state of the art. Okay, TSNI stands for T-Distributed Stochastic Neighborhood Embedding. Don't worry about the names. So let me just run this. Okay, I'm just running it. So here, th this is the final output. How we reach this output, I'll explain you. I promise you, I'll surely help you through this. This is the algorithm running right now. Here, each dot, each dot here represents a data point. Each point, each, each dot here represents a 784 dimensional data point 
Of course, we can't visualize 784 dimensions, right? We are projecting into two dimensions. My x-axis here is dimension one. My y-axis here is dimension two. So what I've done here is I have taken a data which is 784 dimensions and I've, I have converted this data into two dimension data so that I can easily visualize. Okay, this is what I have done. Each point here corresponds to one of your xi's, e each visual point here. So I've taken 784 dimensional data con and transformed this using an algorithm called tSNE. We will learn what tSNE does internally. Okay, I just want to motivate you with, with an example of how it will be at the end. Okay, we convert into two dimensional data set and the color code for each data point is the class label. Okay, let me show this to you. Okay, let me show this to you with an example. Okay, so this, so I'm just going on this page as my mouse pointer moves. All these are zeros. This is a zero like this. These are all images that it's showing. So all your red points are zeros, as you notice. Okay. So what what about your what about your uh, these points are sixes. Your blues are sixes. Now you might wonder why the heck is the blue point there? Why the heck is a blue point there? If you if you point to the blue point there, right? It looks so it's it it act, even though it is six, it actually looks more like zero. Because somebody didn't put the tail to your six properly. Similarly, this six, it looks more like zero than six, right? That's why, th th sorry. So that's why this looks, this looks more like this, even though this is six, it looks very much like, like a, like, like a zero, right? It looks very much like a zero. So let me, okay. It looks very much like a zero, right? That's why it has put this point closer to your, so all your red points are zeros. If you notice, all your zeros have come very close to each other. Okay, all these light greens are your twos, right? All these blues are your sixes. All these, uh, uh, all these purple colors are your eights. Okay, your dark greens here are your three. Your, um, uh, your browns are one. So what they have done is they have applied TSNI, okay, to transform your data from a 784 dimensional data set to a two dimensional data set. Okay, this this is the this is the dimensional reduction where I'm taking a data which is extremely highly dimensional and I'm converting into a very low dimensional space. And now when I visualize this data and when I color these points based on my yas, it looks very logical. All my zeros are somewhere here, right? All all my sixes are mostly here. And and a six that looks like zero is grouped with zeros. So this gives me a lot of intuition on how the data is in the 784 dimensional space. So this is the final outcome after running TSNI. But what happens internally, all the mathematics we will learn. I just wanted to motivate you with an example. So this is the MNIST dataset, which we will use for dimensional reduction techniques. Okay, we will run through all of them. We will replicate these results, by the way, we'll replicate these results in our Python notebooks. But for teaching, using 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 uh, Christopher Ola's notebooks are, are much more useful because very, very interactive. All of this code is written in JavaScript. Beautifully interactive stuff. So even though this is two, it looks closer to zero and hence it was grouped, it's closer to zeros than twos. All these are twos, okay? So this is brilliant visualization, okay? Pro I promise you, uh, as part of this course, in the next few topics, you'll learn all about, all about Disney. And we will use the MNIST data set. We will use the MNIST data set uh, for, for understanding high dimensional data visualization and dimensional reduction. Of course, for all of your high dimensional data visualization, we have to, Reduce the dimensions of the data set so that it's, it's much more understandable. Just like this. Um, here, here is a proof. I'm taking a 784 dimensional data set and putting it in a 2D and the visualization is terrific. 